In this tutorial, we're going to be learning about a couple of tips and tricks in Substance Painter that you might not have known about. You can check the timestamps below if you want to skip ahead the specific parts of the video. First off, we're going to start with tip number one, and it's on how to add a custom shelf. Here are three materials that I got from the 3db asset library. To add the custom shelf, just open up a blank project, go to edit, settings, click on shelf, and all we need to do is to specify the name and where we want our custom shelf to be stored. In this case, I'll just make a new folder and I'll just name it a shelf, choose that as the location, and then click on the plus icon. Click on OK, and you'll notice that Painter will automatically populate the folder. And if you look, it's the exact same folder structure as the shelf inside Painter. All that's left now is to drag and drop our materials into the materials folder, and there's our black floor panel. What's really cool about this is that Painter dynamically updates the shelf, so if you add another material into the custom shelf folder, you'll see it right away. And that's how you add a custom shelf inside Painter. Another cool thing you can do is being able to paint over your baked maps inside Painter itself. Here's a chair asset from the 3db asset library, and we just did a quick bake on it. The bake looks fine for the most part, but as you can see here, there's a baking artifact. We can check which map needs to be fixed by going up to the top right corner, click on this drop down list, scroll down under mesh maps, and we can check the normal and the ambient occlusion maps. In this case, the map that needs to be fixed is the AO map. Let's go to the texture set settings, and you'll notice that we have options here like normal map mixing and ambient occlusion mixing. The AO mixing list isn't clickable because we don't have a channel for it, so let's go up here, add an AO channel, and now we can click on the list and switch it from multiply to replace. Because we clicked on replace, we can now remove the big map for the texture set. Now let's go to the layer stack, add a fill layer, disable all the channels except for the AO, go to the project tab on the shelf, and drag and drop our baked AO into the slot. Now that our AO map is a layer, we can paint over it. Click on add a fill layer, turn off all the channels except for AO, right click, add a black mask, right click on the black mask and add a paint layer. Let's just switch over to the AO channel and go from multiply to normal. And now we can paint over it. Moving on to tip number three, we have anchor points. For this example, we have a door knob asset with some rust on it. Whenever you want to paint in some normal map detail, usually you just make a paint layer, turn off all the channels except for normal, drag in your chosen map, and paint on your mesh. The thing is, you'll notice that the rust effect we have here isn't being applied to our paint layer. We can fix that using an anchor point. Just right click on your paint layer, add an anchor point, and let's name it something like bolt. Now we're gonna drag the paint layer under the layer with the effect that we want, click on dirt, and scroll all the way down to micro normals. Now we have an option here for anchor point. Let's click on bolt, set the reference channel to normal, turn on micro normal, and now we have the rust affecting our paint layer. An even better workflow for this would be to make a new fill layer, turn off all the channels except for normal, add an anchor point, and for this, let's name it something like control. Under normal, set it to pass through and then switch our macro normal to the new anchor point. We can put these inside a folder, and now every paint layer you make under the fill layer will be affected by the rust. Now that we've used the paint layer to add in some detail on our normal map, that leads us to tip number 4, and that's using the resource updater. Let's say you wanted to change the alpha you used for the normal map. 
you would probably end up erasing what you painted, pick up the alpha you wanted to replace it with, and then paint it again. That works, but say you had a lot of stuff to redo. It's not very efficient. We can use the resource updater to fix that. All we need to do is go to tools, click on the resource updater, and it'll bring up this window, and here we have the list of resources that we've used for the project. We can go to the map that you want to replace, click on new resource, and for this example, let's just pick this map, then click on update. And as you can see, all that detail that we painted in just got updated. And for tip number five, we can talk about fixing seams. Here's our wooden material on the mesh, and it looks pretty okay from a distance. But when you look closer, you can see that there's a visible seam. A quick way to get rid of that is to go to the properties, change the projection from UV projection to triplanar projection. And for this, let's just rotate the material, and now there's no more visible seam.